Welcome back to another episode of Boondock Nation. This week, we're talking about what makes snowmobiling so unique for millions of us across the world. On any given day of snowmobiling, there's a lot of adversity that you might come across. There's a lot of things that you're going to encounter that are just completely unknown. And there's a lot of other really, really cool things that you just get to experience that no one else ever does. So when you leave to go riding for the day, you have your pack of people that you're riding with. You have your group, uh, it could be a group of three, it could be a group of seven. It really depends on the day. But what it all boils down to is it's you and your sled versus the mountain. And whether you're trying to get from point A to point B on the hillside, or do a bow tie, or a hop over, or a log hop or a jump, whatever it is, it's really you and your sled and it's what you feel and know how to adapt to on the mountain that makes it so special and that's why the sport of snowmobiling is so darn cool. As snowmobilers, we view everything through a different lens as individuals. What someone may see on a hillside, another person will see something completely different. That looks like some 46 tings. That looks like rocks in the middle though. Yeah. This is good. That's good. That's, that's, that's good. good. No matter the size of our group, when we head out on the mountain, we're constantly pushing ourselves to become better snowmobilers. Whether that be better at hitting jumps, features, riding the trees. Yeah, so these days you see, you know, sledders going out there and doing three, four, five, six, seven bow ties in a line. You know, where in 2015, there was only a handful of people that actually could pull the move off. So the way the sport has progressed is super cool. You know, it's been, snowmobiling itself is a very inspirational sport. You know, you look up to people in this sport and you try to progress their level. Um, they might inspire you to be able to try a new move. And it's, it's cool to see, you know, how much the sport has progressed as a whole in this new generation. Uh, that's coming up and, and their view on you know the direction that the sport of sledding is going to go uh, And you see the sleds being made to kind of that that person too now they're coming with short tunnels and tapered tunnels and lower handlebars and stuff That's more conducive to the style of riding that people are doing so uh, I think that's that's really cool And that's something we're going to see more of in the future no matter what you're set out to progress on on any given day, snowmobilers are aspirational in nature and everything can be a challenge if you make it. As a group of snowmobilers in the backcountry, it's really interesting to observe how people move through terrain. Typically we'll ride for a few minutes, scope things out, and everyone seems to kind of congregate in one area um, as we scope out the zone that we're in. For me as a rider, the first thing I look for are jumps. I love getting the sled off the ground. And whenever I roll into a zone, that's the first thing I'm looking for. I'm always looking for little hip jumps. Anything that can, I can incorporate a little style into the jump in is really what I look for in a piece of terrain. Now, someone else in our group may be looking for the perfect bow tie spot. Um, that might be right in the landing of my jump. Likewise, someone might be ripping up the meadow, you know, just doing donuts, pow turns, whatever it may be. But we're all moving through terrain and working together as a group to essentially conquer this mountain. And that's what's so cool about being a snowmobiler, is that you can be out and have fun with your friends from the moment you load up the truck to the gas station to getting out into the zone. But when you're out there, it's really just you against the mountain. Something for me, when I go on the mountain, I have you know maybe one or two things that I want to go out there and I want to at least attempt or try to pull off or, or work on if it's just... Straight up, I want to get better at doing bow ties. Okay, I'm going to just go crank out a whole bunch of bow ties to both sides um, to make sure I'm not favoring, you know, my left side versus my right or vice versa. Um, but I think, you know, having that in mind and going out of the mountain with a plan for yourself internally so that you can progress as a rider is super important. And that's what makes this sport progress as a whole, honestly. Like, I go to the mountain, I say, I really want to work on getting my hopovers done, come to a super conducive hillside. Okay, I'm gonna try to crank out 10 hopovers on this hillside, and you know, if I don't land them all, that's probably what's gonna happen, but you might get one or two of them, and that's progression in itself. So, um, I think just mentally having your own agenda when you go out there to progress on something is super important, and that's something I've really grown to love. 
When we were becoming better snowmobilers, everyone kept saying that we just need seat time. And I believe it. Like, everything translates, whether you're riding down the trail or, you know, riding across a lake or side hilling through the trees. No matter what you do, the familiarity makes you a better snowmobiler. So there's a huge relationship between your body, your mind, and your engine. So there are times when I'm completely isolated from my snowmobile, where it, maybe I'm in a jump and it's whipped out and completely floating underneath me. And there's times where I'm completely locked in, in the trees where I've got a firm grip on the handlebars, and I'm making that sled do exactly what I want it to do. Being able to bounce back and forth between those states um, is part of what makes you a great snowmobiler. When you've been working really hard for years on tailoring your skills and it all comes together when you're pushing terrain, it's one of the best feelings on earth. That's one thing I love about spring riding, is the ability to climb just about anything out there when avalanche conditions are low and the snow has a ton of traction. It's the ultimate freedom when you can look at any mountaintop and decide where you want to go. Uh, doing it with a group of your friends makes it even better, but there's no better feeling than climbing up on top of a ridge that you've always looked at and have never been able to make it up to, but your skills have progressed that far to get you up there. I think the stoke is, uh, you know, the stoke is obviously something that gets every sledder fired up in the fall um, or so, as soon as snow starts flying, but for me, it's like, as soon as we're done with heydays, I'm starting to get, you know, into hunting a little bit, and you see the first flights of snow, and it definitely gets you it amped up to get on the snow, and each season, it seems like more than the last. It, I don't know if that's just me or if that's ever a snowmobiler out there, but it seems like uh, every season that comes, I get more amped up to try new stuff and progress and uh, just get out in the snow. But, you know, what that means in the fall is dedicating some time to at least conditioning for a few weeks. You know, I try to do some running in the fall and just, I guess, stay active overall in the summer months too. I try to stand up a whole bunch to kind of work on the fundamentals of, you know, riding and riding something with an engine. I think there's something super important to uh, the coordination between your body and an engine and, uh, you know, just having something that you can kind of predict while you're riding it. Um, so I ride my stand up a bunch in the summer to help with that and then just overall, um, you know, working on a little bit of cardio to help adapt the uh, Midwestern lungs to uh, some of this upper elevation stuff that we ride. There's no other machine out there that can get an individual across such rugged terrain in such quick time, especially someone who's proficient at riding the machine. Um, we are able to crawl up almost vertical walls um, of snow and ice and ascend thousands of feet in a matter of seconds, uh, which is really not something you can do other than in the helicopter. So if you take all the elements of what it takes to be a snowmobiler or go out for a day of snowmobiling, you know, you've got the connection between your mind, body, and your engine and your snowmobile, and also you've got, you know, the challenge ahead of you of this is the mountain I want to take on, you know, I want to conquer this thing, I want to get to the top, or I want to you know, do this. It's all those elements and, you know, including uh, when you go out there to progress on something. You combine all of this stuff into one day's riding and each day there's a little bit of a different element uh, or combination of all of this stuff. But either way, when you go out there, um, it's you versus the mountain and that's what takes you to pushing into new terrain, finding new zones, hitting new jumps, pulling crazy lines in the trees, whatever it might be, that's what all comes together in the end and what makes snowmobiling the coolest one player game on the planet. Whether you're riding a couple hundred miles of trails a day or pushing terrain in the backcountry, every snowmobiler looks through their lens differently. But what's cool is that we can all come together as one community that shares the same passion and loves this one player game.